Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Final Fantasy 16 playthrough. I hope you're all doing well. I know that I am. And today, we are hopefully going to finish all of these side quests once and for all. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Uncle, I bring good news. The Field Marshal has agreed to your plan. Ha! Of course he has! I didn't doubt you for a moment, dear boy. Rutherford is accompanying him back to your manor in Porter's Alder as we speak. They will await your return there. As will one other. One other? Who, exactly? Lord Havel was concerned that even if he could get the realm's armies to agree to an accord, he might not be as successful in convincing those with political power. He asked if I might have a solution, and I suggested a certain Imperial Lord Magistrate turned Liberator. One of your co-conspirators? Master Quinton would probably call me one of his, but yes. Another outlaw, then? Just the thing we need to put these rotten politicos in their places. Good thinking, Clive. I'm glad you approve. The more the merrier, eh? Uncle. Assuming Havel and Quentin can solve our problem with the armies, you still haven't mentioned how we might manage the grain shortages. Oh, don't you worry, my boy. The seven high houses will be seeing to that. They have all agreed to make the most Generous of donations. Oh, of course, it did take a little persuasion, but luckily I had some unexpected help. From who? Why, you, my boy. Rumor has it that you rescued the Lady Ariane's head steward, Rockford, from a horde of bloodthirsty bandits. It was more of a handful. Well, the old battle axe was so pleased. She had a shipload of talents delivered to my private docks by the next new moon. And when the other houses saw the parsimonious old crone's purse strings finally loosen, they as good as tripped over themselves in the rush to follow suit. <laughs> I'm happy to hear it. Now, I must be getting back to the manor. Join us there at your earliest convenience, would you? Of course, Uncle. And how, pray tell, will we get that grain to the capital if the roads are still overrun with a kashik? You find another bloody road? I only have so many men, and I'm not about to send them headlong into an ether flood. That is, unless you'd have them turn as well. Well, I'd certainly eat less. <sighs> Says the man with a belly bigger than a band of curls. My soldiers actually need their rations. Without any food to keep them going, they'll be dead even before you've sent them on your fool's errand. <clears throat> if I may, gentlemen, perhaps I might suggest an alternative approach. Though supply routes are indeed disrupted, there is no shortage of ships. Indeed, they bob away in every bay from here to Randalar, awaiting a safe haven. Allow them to make port and fill their bellies full of grain. And once those who crowd the cities are fed, ferry the displaced back to the countryside to work the fallow fields. Ah, but I'm sure that you wish to continue your discussion. Forgive the interruption. Two such firm friends as yourselves need no help from the likes of me. Rutherford spoke fondly of the great bond between you. Us? Friends? I can't stand the man! Clive, I'm beginning to question the quality of the company you keep. And what kind of company are you expecting him to keep? The man's a criminal! Criminal? How... how... Dare you! You are not fit to breathe the same air as this fine, upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding? He calls himself Sid the Bloody Outlaw! Once more unto the breach. <sighs> Shall we begin again? 
What we seek here is not to create a new nation, nor to claim the thrones of those that already exist. We wish simply to bring stability to the realm that mankind might weather the current storm. And to do that, we must convince those in power, the generals, the statesmen, the nobles, that our cause is just. There will be disagreements, yes, and I imagine some resistance, much resistance. But we cannot let that deter us. If we show them the path, show them that we walk it ourselves, then I am confident they will follow. The fate of the world lies in my nephew's hands, but the well-being of her people lies in ours. And we must not squander the chance that Clive has given us. Uncle Byron, I... Now, with that settled, let's move on to the signing of the Accord. For what great moment in history hasn't been accompanied by a little ceremony? <clears throat> Citizens of Valisthea, I present to you the Triunity. Rutherford, my quill. Well, my boy, the stage is set. That it is. This is the role you were born for. Now I ask only that you trust in the talents of your supporting cast. We shall play our parts to the best of our abilities, that you might have the opportunity to shine. The realm needs its Sir Crandall, and there is no better Crandall than you, Clive. I... Uh, I want you to keep this signed accord as proof of our faith in you. I will. Thank you, Uncle. You know what we haven't done in a while? Is look at our abilities. We have a ton of uh, ability points. Hmm. Oh, that is expensive. What do you think that thing is? And how the hell is Sid going to deal with it? <clears throat> We're going to continue on here. Try not to waste too much time. Okay, next is trial and error. There's something about it. You should have seen. Welcome back, Sid. Welcome back, Sid. Yes. Welcome back. Trip wasn't too much of a pain in the ass, I hope. Truth be told, it was me who suggested roping you in to help with the trial. But from what I hear, things didn't go quite as planned. No, they most certainly did not. I think he deserves to pass. Amber lost his nerve in the face of a beast of prey. But he didn't lose heart. He pressed on, and he achieved his aim. And is that not what we ask of our scouts? Indeed it is. Thank you for your honest appraisal, Sid. The fact remains, however, that Ember will not always have a battle-hardened warrior on hand to pluck him from the jaws of peril. 
All I have gleaned from this trial is that without someone watching his back, Ember is little more than a liability. Wait, Sergeant. Ember still has much to learn, it's true. And this time he was found wanting. But I'd say he's due a second chance, nonetheless. After all, he did do as you asked. With a bit of hard work, any hand can be made to hold a blade. And any mind can conquer its fears. But a scout's nose is different. You've either got one, or you ain't. And by sniffing out that log, young Ember here has shown he has a conk and a half. Wouldn't do to waste it now, would it? Fine. One more chance. I'll do whatever you ask. I'll spend my days and nights in the pit if I have to. I'll show you. Just you wait. Daft as a brush, that one. But his heart's in the right place. Just like someone else we know. And if you ask me, we've been leaning on him for far too long. That time the curse breakers took some of the weight off his shoulders, I reckon. It couldn't hurt. Just don't tell Gav I said so, will you? I won't have him thinking he's been hard done by. <laughs> Next thing you know, he'll be asking for a day off. <sighs> Chance would be a fine thing. Back to work. Forgive me, Sid. This did not play out as I expected. <laughs> Things really do these days. But that's why we need men like Ember more than ever. Men who can make the best out of a bad situation. Remember that. I, I will, Sid. Thank you. Looks like we can uh, get some more stuff from Desiree. But we're going to turn in all these quests before we go over to Desiree. Vivian. I found it. The book you lost. You... You found it. Thank you, Clive. Even though I asked this of you, I was not entirely sure it would be possible. I feared the executors had seized every copy. I met with one of these... executors. And I convinced him to let me keep it. He told me something. That the truth is just a matter of collective belief. And that if enough people believe a lie... that lie becomes the truth. It does. But it also means that the truth is not immutable, that it can be changed, provided that those who wish to change it can convince enough people that their perspective is the correct one. As the sad history of the bearers proves. You said that the book inspired you to become a scholar. It did. Or its author, rather. She was a heretic, you see. A firebrand and a dissenter. A gallows stood ready for her in every corner of the realm. And by shunning society, or perhaps being shunned by it, she stumbled upon a truth so potent that an entire realm trembled at the prospect of its utterance. I, too, have always felt somehow set apart from the world of men. A stranger to my own species. She taught me that my solitude was not a curse, but a gift. And that, though my journey to the truth might be a lonely one, what I found at my destination would be more than worth the cost. Do you still feel that way? That you're not... one of us? Honestly? I'm not entirely sure anymore. Since coming to the hideaway, I find my thinking somewhat... clouded. Perhaps the result of studying mankind from a rather closer perspective than I had intended. But the more I study, the more I find value in this perspective. In looking not from the outside, but from within. 
So if you'll permit me, I'd like to continue my work here. Remember, Clive, when enough people believe, belief begets truth. Give the men and women of this benighted world the gift of truth. Make them believe in you, as I do. I'll try, Vivian. I'll try. And we got another bounty. Surprise, surprise. The Wailing Banshee. Lewd. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Is everything we've received and everything promised. You earned this. Awesome. All done? Stop pressing X, Mr. Wayne. Mid, tell me this is all you need. You make it sound like I asked you to save the world or something. Tell me, this is all you need. It's most of what I need. After you left, I went over the figures again, and I realized I'd forgotten a one and a zero. <sighs> and? And a cogwheel. Just a tiny one. Though, that's the problem. Gears that small are a bastard to make, and I may have lost the one Blackthorn spent a fortnight toiling over. Wait. The children. When they took apart your scales, there was a tiny brass gear. Now that I think about it, I... They didn't use it when we put the scales back together. The young'uns? But why would the... You know what? I don't want to know. I'll keep working on the model. You go and find that cog. Has Middadol mentioned a new project yet? Sid! Is Mid still hiding from us? She wasn't hiding. She's fine. She's just busy working on her next project. A new invention? What is it? What is it? Is it an airship? I bet it's an airship! Do you think she'll let us help? That just so happens to be why I'm here. She needs something special, something only you three can provide. A brass gear. A tiny one. One that might fit on, say, a set of scales. Oh, the one you forgot! We remember! We saved it, just in case. It's in the bag of bits. Since your lesson, we've been disassembling, then reassembling everything we can find. All the pieces that are left over, we keep under our beds, just in case. That's good to know. Look! I found it! Is that all? Just the gear? We have more parts if Mid needs them. That's all for now. But I'll let Mid know about your... hoard. Just in case. Thanks, Sid. <laughs> Those kids are something else. Well, did they have it? They did, and they kept it somewhere nice and safe. 
Will it work? Will it work? He's perfect! You're a genius, Clive. What exactly are you going to use it for? Only the most important job of all. The wings aren't going to move on their own. But with the right cog in the right place? Well, you just wait and see. That should do her. Here goes nothing. <sighs> Titan's tits. It wasn't supposed to fly, was it? Of course it was supposed to fly. Wouldn't be much of an airship if it didn't. Honestly... These bloody engines are driving me mad! I was so sure this would be the day she saw it. The Mithril engine was made to make dreams come true. But maybe this is one dream the world's better off without. Show folk how to take flying. It won't be long till they're raining death down on each other. People will lose their homes, children, their mums and their dads. Like I lost mine. I'm sorry. So am I, Clive. So am I. Sorry that I have to choose. Do I follow my head or do I follow my heart? Good question. The first time I stood on the deck of your ship, felt the wind in my hair. It was like I was flying, but imagine how it would feel to actually do it. My dad always said there were two ways of living life. Chasing a dream or shuffling to your grave. And he were right. Right about a lot of things. Not that I like to admit it. People need dreams to chase. Especially in a world like this. Right. When this is over, I'm going to take all my Mithril engines to Zemeckis and sling them over the edge. I won't have my dream end up turning into someone else's nightmare. But all that hard work... All that hard work will not be used for war, Jamie. But it ain't like it'll be gone. Tell me, Clive. Have you ever been on a treasure hunt? Not since Joshua and I were boys. Why do you ask? Because I'm going to bury the engine schematics and leave behind a little riddle telling people where to find them. A really hard one, so that only the most dedicated dreamers will ever be able to work it out. Ooh, <laughs> I can picture it now. Some daft general squinting at the words with a gormless expression on his mug. Like that one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Of course, if I'm putting this engine at the end of a treasure hunt, I'll still need to make it a treasure worth hunting for. Won't be much of a prize if it couldn't even make a toy boat fly after all. <sighs> My dad always said, dream big. But it ain't the size of a dream that's important, is it, Clive? Only that it's a good one. And I reckon I've got a fair few good ones left in me. I'm sure you do.
I want to look at that bounty one more time before we turn in this other quest. I just, I know it was in Walud, but I want to know exactly where in Walud. I think it started with a G or something. Garnet? Garnet? We'll go up top here. Turn in this quest, and I think this is the last one that we need. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> More side quests. Uh, never mind. I hear that you traveled to Ash, Sid. Did you by any chance recover the names of my fallen friends? I did. Yes. If I may... Bearer Registry. The director was a brutal man. He got no worse than he deserved. The registry was all I found beneath the tree. There was no sign of a body. Nor any record of what happened to the children after the orphanage closed. I pray that at least some of them survived. All their names are here. The ones we lost. My friends. My light in those dark times. I can still remember their faces. Like it was yesterday. Children who were taken from their bunks in the morning. Never to return. No explanation ever offered. They'd be happy to know that you survived, Herman. But why did I make it out alive, when so many others died in that awful place? It's not your fault. And blaming yourself won't bring them back. Honor their memory. See that their names live on. That way at least. They're never truly gone. Thank you. Sid. I'm going to write a book. An account of the horrors of Badbach, and the spirit of those its custodians sought to crush. All of Valisthea will know of our suffering, and in the name of those I lost, I will not let it happen again. Neither will I. These records would have been buried for all eternity, were it not for you. <laughs> Thank you. Not to complain, but do we really need this many side quests right at the end of the game? Kind of pulling me out of the immersion here. Real fast, I want to go over to Walud. Look for Grimmick. Ah, Garnick, Garnick, that's what it's called, Garnick. So over here is where that, um, I don't remember what it was called. So we're going to go over here and then we're going to go over here and hopefully we're done with the side quests afterwards. Do this bounty and the two side quests and hopefully we're done. Because we're not finishing this video, we're not wrapping it up until we've done these two side quests and that damn bounty. So we'll start with the side quest that's in the cantina here. Ugh. 
You all right? Something troubling you? Uh, no more than usual. It's just... Edda's baby will be coming soon, and I wanted to make something for it. I'm sure she'd like that. Back in the north, families would always make gifts when a bairn was on the way. Yeah, I let the little tykes know they were welcome in their new homes, like. So? What's the problem? Well, the problem is that Edda's due any day now, and I don't know if I'll be ready in time. Is there anything I can do to help? Hmm. You know, there just might be. All right, then. What exactly are we making? Uh, a good luck charm. But not just any good luck charm. Not just any. No. One made from the feather of a silver chocobo. <laughs> There's nought lucky in all the realm, or so we used to say back home anyway. Thing is, they're hard to come by. Had Otto and Karen check with their suppliers, but nothing. I try and track one down myself, only... Only the big day is fast approaching. And that's all you need, a feather. That or the bird whose arse it's attached to, aye. I was gonna start by asking around with travelling traders plying the northern borders. Well, there's no shortage of those passing through Martha's. I think I might make that my first port of call. I'll let you know if I find anything. You're a good friend, Clive. I won't forget this. It's usually me making demands of Hippocrates. I wonder what this is about. Lawsman Harpocrates, I received your note. Ah, yes. I expect you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> you spoke of making amends with Dion, but I can't imagine what for. Then I should begin by telling you that I was once his tutor. This was some years ago, of course, before I joined Sid in his hideaway. At that time, I was counted among the foremost scholars of Oriflam and was accordingly invited to the palace to supervise the young prince's education, all to ensure that the future emperor had a firm grounding in, well, everything an emperor should. History, religion, commerce, government. Alas, our time together was cut short when Dion left to join the dragoons, his studies no longer being deemed necessary. I had not expected to meet with him again, Least of all here. Have you spoken with him? No, I... <laughs> I have yet to find the right moment. His Highness always seems so preoccupied, especially when alone. I would not wish to disturb his ruminations with idle words of greeting. Not when I know he dwells upon the evil Ultima had him commit in the Dominion. The guilt weighs heavily on him, I know. But as you say, that was Ultima's doing. Surely you can't blame yourself. When I first met him, it was not guilt, but his people's expectations that weighed heavily upon him. And I did nothing to ease that burden. He bore it alone. Until the day he could not bear it any longer. It is one of my greatest regrets that I only ever offered him my wisdom when what he truly needed was friendship. The blame for Dion's transgressions lies not only on his shoulders, but on mine. I see. I'm ready to help you in any way that I can. 
Then I beg that you bring me a wild wyvern tail. Apothecaries across the ages agree that even to glimpse such a flower is to be granted inner solace. Fabulists and fraudsters all, of course. But there is oft a seed of truth to be found where even the most outlandish opinions align. Well, it can't hurt to try. Where can I find this flower? And how will I know it? You have seen cultivated wyvern tales before, I trust. The lily-white blossoms from whose roots the poisonous ink for the brand is distilled. Well, those which grow in the wild differ only in their purple hue. The harsher the environment in which they are raised, the deeper the colour. There is a waterfall in Rickmal's roost across the strait, where the flowers once grew in abundance. Whether they still survive there, I know not. But try as I might, I can find no likelier location. It's all right. I'll find you a wife and tail one way or another. Thank you, Clive. And please, be safe. Anything else? Nope. So over here. <laughs> and there's no... Uh, Alright, we're going to do that last because we're going to have to come over this way to get it. So let's... Let's come over here to Garnick. Put a marker here real fast. Ready, girl? This might take a while. Nope. No, it won't. Because we're not going to fight it. Back to the stables, girl. Oh... <laughs> we haven't seen one of these in a good long time. Harmon's madness lives on. He does not quit moving. already Too slow. 
I'm guessing that's the last damn bounty. Hopefully it is. That was a lot of bounties. Rest in peace. All right. I guess we're going to go over here to Estala or Estala. As soon as we can hop on Ambrosia, we'll hop on Ambrosia. But I want to finish up these two side quests and then we'll cut the video and hopefully in the next video, we'll actually be able to start on the main quest, which I'm guessing is probably the last quest. Foster. I think we're going to have to go around here. flowers blooming next to a waterfall shouldn't be too hard to find Pick enough for a bunch, I suppose. Now to the next one. Martha's Rest. Let's hope one of the merchants here has what Gav needs. Just because the heavens have gone to wreck and ruin, it don't mean we have to. How do, traveller? You've the look of a man who could do with a new whetstone? Or perhaps a bawdy etching of the vicerine? Uh, maybe another time. I'm looking for a silver chocobo feather. <sighs> if that's the case, rumours are all you're likely to find. No one has seen a silver chocobo for years. Word is, they were all hunted for their feathers. 
Some northern nonsense about bringing good luck. <laughs> Didn't bring them much, nor their bows. If any are still out there, I reckon they'll be doing their damnedest not to be discovered. You're probably right. Thank you anyway. I've got greens of all Looking shapes for and sizes. Colours too. Excuse me. I'm looking for something. Oh, well, then I'm your man. <laughs> a silver chocobo feather. Oh, or maybe not. Though you're not the first to mention the bird around here. There was a man stopped by the rest not long ago, claiming he was attacked by a silver chocobo. Near some gutted hovel, not far from Eastpool. Most took him for a braggart and a liar, but who knows? Perhaps there was some truth to his tale. We'll see. Thank you. I'll build a barricade so sturdy, even a bandit girl got... Can I help you with summer? You wouldn't happen to sell silver chocobo feathers, would you? <laughs> I deal in fruit, not fancies. But if it's fancies you're after, I suggest you try Rhiannon's ride. Was a silver chocobo seen there? Oh, yes. If you believe the ravens of a madman. It wouldn't be the first time. A silver chocobo sighted in the hills near Rhiannon's ride. It sounds almost too good to be true. But since I'm already here... Um... No sense in not just running over there. Come on. Can hardly make it up. We're not alone. Tracks. They're not left by bandits for a change. More tracks. And these look fresh. A chocobo was here. And recently. Perhaps it still is. I don't hear anything. Well, I'll be damned. It's all right. I'm not going to hurt you. Just borrowing a feather for my friend. Thank you. Let's get this back together before they change their minds. Go back to the hideaway, turn in these quests, and call it a video.
it was no trouble at Clive, you're back. How'd you get on? Any luck? Any luck, you say? Crystal's crack. Is this what I think it is? Where in the hell did you find it? It's a long story. Right there on the road to Eastpool. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Everything up there's been abandoned for years. The empty cabin made for the perfect shelter. Though I fear my presence may have forced the poor creatures to look elsewhere. Don't blame yourself, Clive. The blight's right on Eastpool's doorstep. They'd have had to move on before long, even if you hadn't have turned up. They'll find a new home, trust me. After all, that's what us endangered animals do. Anyway, what matters is, you managed to nick us one of their quills before they could run off. And now all that's left is to fix it to the carving. I didn't know you could carve. Mm, reckon there's a lot you don't know about me. Like the fact I'm as good with a whittling knife as I am with a sword. And that bone ember gave me's a dream to work with. What did you say it was from again? An Avis? But it weren't your Avis, Sid. I slew one of my own at last. So all those long nights in the pit finally bore fruit. I'm proud of you, Ember. <laughs> Don't speak too soon. I ain't done my trial yet. There we go. What do you think? I think if you ever hang up your scouting cap, you'll be able to make an honest living. How will I? <laughs> I should go and see if Ed is awake. Give him my best. Eh, you can give it to yourself. Come on. She's all the way in the infirmary. How are you feeling? Well, thank you. Is something wrong? Wrong? No, nothing like that. Uh, uh, what it is, is... Uh... Go on, please. It's beautiful. Did you make it? We did. I, ah, uh, it's from all of us here at the hideaway. Your new family, like. It's a good luck charm. We may come up north when a bairn's on the way. I, I, I mean a, a baby. To let him know that they're part of the family too. Oh, I, I, ho I hope you like it. I, I don't know what to say. I thank you, my lords. For everything. If there's anything you need, just let us know. I will. Ah, oh, Clive. Fancy a swift off. I'm thirsty. I could be convinced. Don't you think you've had enough? No, oh, we're celebrating. I'm gonna be a father. <laughs> I think Edda might have something to say about that. Ah, you know what I mean. Bit of light in these dark times. <sighs> oh. 
wasn't long after me tenth name day, my mum told us she was with child again. <laughs> I was over the fucking moon. I was looking forward to having a little one to lord it over, what with me being the runt of the litter. Thought I'd finally have a chance to prove to the world that I could be a big brother. Imperials came the day she went into labor. Had myself a baby sister. And then I didn't. Me whole family gone in a blink while I hid in the cellar like the spineless little arsehole I was. Great brother I turned out to be. I'll never be a leader. And I'll never be a hero. I'm just a daft little dog who comes running when his master calls. I'll never be like you, or Sid, or Jill, or even Toggle. <laughs> Have you finished? Maybe. Do you know why you're our best scout? Yeah. Because you don't need anyone to hold your hand. Without your resourcefulness, your courage, your determination, I don't know where we'd be. Maybe hanging off a cliff like... Uh... That was only the once. Exactly. You learned from it. And here you are after founder knows how many missions stronger for everyone. <laughs> and let's not forget Rosalith. Who was it who freed me from the dungeon? Who was it who ran to Jill's rescue? That would be me. Because you're our brother, Gav. My brother. <sighs> Your brother. Which means that when the time comes, I get your room and your sword. I may have had one too many. You may have had ten too many. I said I was thirsty. Gotta get back to work anyway. After I walk this off. Uh, Clive? What is it? Thanks for, you know... I know. Do you think they'll come back? Okay. Last side quest to turn in, right? Right? <laughs> uh I found the flowers you were looking for. You did? I think I did. <sighs> you 
did indeed. My dear boy, thank you. You wanted to make Dion a gift of one, did you not? Shall I invite him to join us? Oh, uh, I don't... It's no trouble. I'll go and fetch him. The frames dipped really bad there for a second. Your Highness, would you do me the honor of accompanying me? No. It is time, then. <laughs> no. Only to the shelves. Our lawsman has something he'd like to give you. Master Harpocrates. No. I dare not show my face before him. Not after everything I have done. I have taken countless innocent lives. And ruined countless more. All because I was weak. I have sworn to atone for my crimes or die in the attempt. But were I to meet with him again, and see in his eyes what I have become, I fear that my resolve might falter. Then that is all the more reason to do it. Test your resolve. Prove to yourself and to him how strong it truly is. You are right. I must, at the very least, offer him my gratitude. Very well, then. Take me to him. Follow me. Even now, I hesitate to approach him. What must he think of me? You'd be surprised. Master Harpocrates, pray, accept my apologies for leaving your tutelage before my studies were complete. Your lessons opened my mind to a world quite unlike the one I had imagined from within the gilded confines of the palace. And I shall be forever grateful for the efforts you made to enlighten me. Lift up your head, your highness. The deeds of youth require no apology. That you took the time to visit me says much about the man you have become. Now, there is something I would like to show you. Is that a wyvern tale? The color is unfamiliar to me. Because it is unique to those found in the wild. Something in the harsh environments in which they grow lends them this striking hue. Their roots are indistinguishable from those of their hothouse cousins, but once they bloom, the difference is immediately apparent. In this flower, I see you, your highness. Its roots were the roots of a wyvern tail, with all that implies. But they do not define it, just as yours do not define you. 
I want you to have it, that it might remind you of this truth. Master Harpocrates, I would ask of you a service. Keep your gift until I have fulfilled my duty to the realm, for only then shall I be deserving of it. As you wish, Your Highness. I shall await your return. Our roots do not define us. <laughs> no wonder my stepmother didn't like him. for reuniting me with memories I had thought long lost. I shall not forget this. Thank you, Clive. Were it not for you, I fear I might never have found the right moment to speak with him. Not to mention the wyvern tales. I shall plant their seeds, that I might not disappoint His Highness upon his return. I hope the soul in the hideaway is to their liking. Why, these flowers bloomed in the bleak, black wastes of Walud. I'm sure Nigel's yard will suit them to a tea. <sighs> when it comes to expressing one's gratitude, I find that words are seldom sufficient. Here. What's this? A stolas quill. Or more precisely, my stolas quill. It is said that an owl's feathers are steeped in the wishes it hears over its long lifetime. All those words just waiting to pour out onto the page. So consider this my wish for you. That one day you may put down your sword and pick up that pen. Well, when that day comes... I'll certainly have a lot to write about. Thank you, Harpocrates. It shall have pride of place in my chamber. Okay, so let's go ahead and read uh, some letters, and then we will look at the Wall of Memories. I'm pretty sure we have everything done. Everything done. <laughs> Hopefully. And then after we uh, read the letters and look at our trophies here, or mementos. Mem oh my goodness, mementos. Can't talk today. But after we do all that, we're going to end the video. We're missing some? What could we possibly be missing? We're missing two. Huh. Maybe we're not done.
watch as soon as I start the next quest or main quest I guarantee you I'm gonna get a flood of side quests we're never gonna finish this game it's just gonna be endless side quest for the the remainder of the game all right with that all being said I want to start by telling everybody thank you so very much for stopping by and watching the video it really does mean a lot to me hopefully you all enjoyed it if you did go ahead and hit that thumbs up button if you didn't go ahead and hit the thumbs down button let me know why down in the comments below it only helps the channel also if you enjoy content just like this be sure to subscribe or don't i don't know i'm not your dad do whatever you want and like always everybody have a good morning a good afternoon or good night whatever time it may be and you're part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.